Look at him. Oh, he got it. <laughs> All right, Brandon. Now what are you gonna do? You got a $200 bait and a whole bunch of teeth. I want you to look at that. When he flipped off, look what he did to my line. How bad would that have been? <laughs> Every fish is the same. I mean, whether it's a gar, whether it's a bass, I mean, they're all predators. That fish followed it all the way, and you'll see bass do it the same way. And we got him on film, and as soon as I killed it and turned the bait, that's when he bit it. And, you know, he didn't bite it the whole way. Just changed the action just at the very end. He smoked it. We're in Florida, you know, and haven't really had many bites, so we decided to switch to a great big swim bait, and this is a big glide bait. And uh, the cool thing about this is, you know, we've got really clear water, and so a lot of times if I'm struggling or I don't really know what lives in a lake, I'll pick it up, because even if you don't catch some, you know, you'll generally get them to show themselves, and you'll kind of learn where they are in the water column. Um, are they offshore? Are they against the bank? And then you can get enough followers on this bait to kind of kind of tell you what's, what's going on in the water. Some key things about a glide bait that, that I've noticed, I've caught an awful lot of fish on it, I've won some tournaments on it. There's several kind of key areas or, or key times during the cast you tend to get a bite. And you know, I'll make a cast and I'll kind of cast ahead of the front of the boat a little bit. When you make a cast in front of the boat, you're gonna have a, generally a little bit of loop in your line. And so as you tighten that loop and you're winding it, you know, the, the bait right now is just swimming in a, in a small S. The first real key area is when that bait swings and it starts coming towards you. You know, within the first quarter of the cast, you'll get probably, I wanna say 30% of your bites. And the reason is, is that bait's kind of changing direction. It's coming off the bank or it's coming off the drop or the grass edge or whatever you're fishing, and it's turning and starting to come towards the boat. So that's kind of your first key area. And then you've got kind of the long lull in between is what I would call it. And so the bait's just kind of working. It's just, it's doing its little S deal. I don't like to run a guide bait kind of twitching it where it goes real hard side to side. I'm going for a real natural approach. So, you know, I just want it doing its little S turn. And so as the S turns come, the second key area is right here. The bait's coming towards the boat. I always bring it up in the middle of the boat. And so as the bait comes up towards the middle of the boat, it's doing two things. It's turning, but it's also coming up. So it's got two, two direction changes, you know, towards you and up. And as that bait starts to come up, you need to have the sun at your back. You know, I almost always fish it with the sun at my back to where I can see the middle of the boat. And as that bait comes up, you'll look and you'll see a shadow behind it. And that's probably 60% of your bites is right here next to the boat. And it's, it's an unbelievable bite. So as the bait comes up, you'll see those fish start to rise up because it's changing direction both ways. And as they come up underneath it, what I like to do is just kind of bring it up to where I can see it real good. Then I'll just give it a quick twitch. Kill it, twitch it, and that glide bait, most of them will turn and do a, do a 180, and that's when they bite. And you've got them on short string right next to the boat. It's an absolute blast. You know, when you're throwing a bait that weighs several ounces, I, you know, I couldn't tell you the exact weight of this, but I know it's awful heavy. It's a great big wooden swim bait. Um, it's important to have the right gear. And, you know, we've got a Muse Black eight foot extra heavy swim bait rod. I don't like to go much over eight foot. I know a lot of guys like to go bigger than that. Eight foot's plenty for me, extra heavy. It handles the bait, no problem. But I love a rod with, with a lot of bend throughout the rod. And that's what this was designed for with swim baits. So look for one that's got a lot of bend throughout the rod and then your reel. That's a big bait to be throwing all day. And so it'll, it'll rip gears out of about any reel. What we've got is the new A3. It's a concept A3 by 13. This reel was designed around the gear. The gear on this is two millimeters wider than any gear on the market. It's giant. I mean, you can see they had to actually build a new housing for it. Um, so the reel's giant. It holds twice as much line as a standard bay caster. So you can get plenty of line. You, know, you gotta throw 20 or 25 on this thing all day long. So you need plenty of spool, big spool. But what I love about it more than anything is when you chunk this out, you know, one, the rod does all the work. It launches it as far as you want to reel it back, but you have these giant paddles and they're corks so they don't slip. I mean, you can wrap your whole hand. I mean, I got pretty big hands and I don't need to just, you know, hold it like this. I mean, I can put my whole hand on this thing. And, you know, when you've got a six, seven, I mean, I've caught, you know, tens and elevens at fork and other places on this. When you've got a, you know, two or three ounce swim bait, an eight foot heavy rod, 25 pound test, 
you better have good gears and, and, and a good handle because you need to hold on because it's gonna it's gonna do everything it can to take it away from you. There he is. No kidding. Nope. 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 I thought that was some high gear. Not the one we're looking for, but it's a bass. What about that? I think the bait's as big as he is. Ha, 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 ha.